I mean, it's just something's wrong with these people is what I'm saying. It's it's. Well, you, you know, it's very interesting because I go back to um, uh, Chinatown, where, of course, the uh, the evil head of the power and, and and water company. And believe me, I know some of these guys, um, you know, he uh, in the end of the film, he has raped his own daughter. And and his line is, I did it because I can. And it's almost a kind of perverse joy that they that they are different than the rest of us. Now, it's true. I don't I must admit, I mean, it's hard for me to understand because, I mean, I'm not claiming any special high moral ground, but I, I just don't have such strange urges. But I'll tell you this. It's almost like they live in this perverted world. If you've just shafted. If you just shafted the entire Greek nation, uh, then uh, picking up a seven-year-old boy uh, may just seem like an appetizer to you. I think it. No, I think that's it. I think, I, uh, Greg, 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 I think you've hit on something here. I think they are morally, spiritually bankrupt, and it's that they've done so much evil, they're cursed with all of this stuff that they're into. I think you just hit it, and you look at sociopaths, psychopaths, sadist other groups, that's the only time they feel alive is when they're doing something really twisted. I think, well, obviously you're a criminologist. You've hit the nail on the head there. Yeah, I think that one, this whole sense of, of impunity and almost the desire to prove that you can get away with something, and almost a childish, when you meet these people, it's almost a sick childish desire to kind of push it into your face, which is what's happening now. When I see, when I see, the, when you read these documents, it's almost like they, they, they're daring you. Um, like I say in, in chapter 12 of, of Vulture's Picnic, and then also like I'm dealing right now with investigating uh, one of the biggest donors to the Republican Party who's spending his time, um, you know, basically stealing all the money for AIDS medicine in Africa. Now, when you pull a stunt like that, what is your moral, you know, is there any moral limit? Is there anything you won't do? I just was in Congo last week where there's a cholera epidemic and the guy's taking their, their money away for the clean water that they need to end the epidemic. Once you get that, I mean, heck, you know, so, you know, uh, a little. So rape, where are they uh, going? A little sodomy. Yeah. 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 So, so, so where are they going then? Well, you know, it's hard to say because, like, you take a guy like uh, Paul the Vulture Singer and uh, one of the characters of Vulture's Picnic, and I didn't call him Vulture's, the, old, the bankers who work with him. And who profit from him, uh, call him a vulture. Maybe his mother does, too. Um, it's like there is no end. That is, they. Uh, he's worth about $4 billion. Why is he continuing this? What does he need that extra money for? Oh, take Charles Koch. You know, I did an investigation of him years ago and uh, from the Koch brothers. He was skimming oil off the Osage Indian Reservation. You'll really like this one, Alec. This is this is right. You, you'll you'll uh, it's in Vulture's Picnic. We have a tape recording of him that I got from an FBI agent, and one of his chiefs is asking why he's stealing money from the Osage oil uh, Osage Indian Reservation. It's about a hundred bucks per per native in the uh, native uh, in the the Indian owned wells. He's already a billionaire. Why is he taking a hundred bucks from a poor native? And the answer, uh, Koch says himself, I want what's coming to me, and that's all of it. In other words, he, there's no moral limit. It's like it's almost like he's got the billions. He's going to steal another hundred bucks from some poor Indian. Uh, you know, so and then you ask, well, so some weird perversion that crosses his mind, you know, to him, it's just ordering another appetizer off the menu. Yeah, it's amazing. And, and, and you know, these, the, uh, these globalists have sold us or attempting to sell us their worldview that torture is good, secret arrest. But, you know, looking at George Soros, uh, I've seen the 60 Minutes piece where I always heard about it, but I actually saw it last year. We played it here from 10 years ago. And he says, was they say, so you help round up your own people and, and give them to the Nazis and take their property. He goes, Yeah. And he goes, and I learned a lot from that. If I wouldn't have, somebody else would. I'm proud that I'm a survivor. And it just it just shows some kind of psychopathic disconnect. And because, you know, you, you tend to usually go after the right wingers. Right. But what do you think of Obama being financed by the very same people and uh, the, the whole political field right now? I mean, what do you think about the Democrats? 
Well, I have to tell you that if you read Vulture's Picnic, you won't think I go after these so-called right-wingers anymore, that is Republicans, because I actually trace the big evil to the Clinton administration, Robert Rubin, and the disease of, of – you know, basically it was a criminal act, deregulation. Understand what Robert Rubin did. He's secretary of the treasury against everyone, every intelligence person's warning. He demands that uh, the casinos, the investment banks, be allowed to merge – and mate with the commercial banks, which we, you and I insure, where we put our savings. He goes off within five months. He's co-chairman of one of these new combined monsters of Citibank. He is given a $110 million fee. Now, I'm sorry. When you change the law and basically bring down the world economy and you get a $110 million fee um, – that makes you a monster. Now, a registered Democrat monster, but a monster nonetheless. Sure, so sure, I, exactly. I, and, 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 and the same yes. group financed Bush, and the same group is financing Obama. So that's the issue. For those that don't know, explain to them about the derivatives. You get rid of Glass-Steagall. He changes the regulations. Now the investment banks that create all this toxic, made-up garbage, they can now get it basically government-backed, like the citizens' money, and then the contagion spreads through anything. Now, they hold us hostage saying, give us unlimited trillions and make us the bosses of the globe even more or we'll bring down the world economy. And now we're held hostage. And I think that's why they're so arrogant. Yeah. And the thing is, is that they have brought that. We, we paid them about four trillion dollars in subsidies, four trillion. And they still brought down the world economy. It's not like we got anything back for it. I mean, I'd almost say, OK, you know, when they say, well, you too big to fail, you got it. You realistically have to bail out the banks. Well, how about bailing us out? And, you know, what did we get in return? And they are, um, you know, like Goldman, for example. And by the way, most of Goldman money went to Democrats, not to Republicans. Uh, Obama got about four to one finance money over McCain. So, I mean, the, what's happened now is that they're used to, you know, the Democrats used to try to pretend to be the party of, of the people. The pretense is gone. Everyone's in the pool. And now, now they're all fighting for that finance and shark and vulture money. And that's the problem, that there is no alternative you either have, you know, the the party owned by the bankers or the party rented by the bankers, and that's kind of your choice. So, do and we that's, just that's stay a very on this business? Do we stay on this express elevator to Hades with these people, uh, or is there a way to get out of it? I mean, how do you and your gut well, see it going? I think it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better because when you see, uh, basically, they could burn down Greece. And, and remember, they were going to have a vote on, by the Greek people, which is the cradle of democracy. Imagine allowing a democratic vote on whether the bankers should be bailed out. Remember, all this money goes to the bankers, not one penny to Greece, 180 billion euros. That's a half a trillion dollars, half a trillion. All goes to the bankers. The Greek people are going to have to pay it off by selling everything that they have. If they can do that there, they can do it in, in Los Angeles. They did it in Ecuador. They, you know, they did it in Argentina. But those people rose up. They tried it in Brazil. They couldn't. They couldn't get away with it very long. But people had to go through a very bad time. You had doctors eating out of garbage cans looking for food. This is where we'll have to head first, and then we will react as they did in South America and say enough of this stuff. But I think it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better because there's no there's a consensus among all the political powers that this is the only way it could be. They are too big to fail and too big to jail. And they're a bunch of crooks. They're confident. The world is their oyster. They can, they can set up a domestic police state to suppress any political justice being brought at them. And so we basically have a Hitlerian fascist group of thugs squatting on us uh, who are on complete power trips. The sky's the limit. Greg, in closing, uh, folks can get the book. They can pre-order it now on Amazon.com. And we'll have you back up in the near future. If you ever come through Austin, we'd love to have you send a car to get you and have you in studio. But uh, uh, in closing, it's now coming out, the DA, NBC's reporting, uh, who never charged uh, the uh, reported uh, child rapist, uh, uh, has been missing since 05. It's now turning out other people are missing who were involved. Uh, it's, they're now saying donors, uh, the word is, and they're, and they're investigating it, we're, we're in there uh, buggering the children. And... That fits in with the Texas Youth Commission and this, and this pervert pattern that we've seen where he was doing it in the showers. 
I, I guess because that makes it more fun, as you were saying, these in criminology that the, uh, they like to flaunt it. And uh, now it, it, it yeah. uh, turns out there were secret deals to cover it up in the school. That's now confirmed. Uh, that's coming out of uh, NBC and ABC. As a former federal investigator, longtime award-winning investigative journalist, your gut, you know, your cop knows or investigator knows, what do you, th what do you just, as a gestalt, what does your nose pick up out of this Penn State thing? Because mine tells me, and I said this on Monday, this goes a lot deeper. Well, number one, if you think it's one place, what this is some special perverted hole, I, I'm afraid that now the, the elite has decided that, you know, there's nothing left to buy except um, impunity. And and not only for their worst urges, but almost like they urge each other on to be more perverse than the next. It's almost like, you know, you can only have so many trophy wives. So now you have um, uh, you, you have your uh, your seven year old prostitutes. I mean, it's I think that, you know, it's maybe it's just the, the new trophy that they have. It's, you know, the new uh, because you can only have so many Gulf streams. You have to understand how much money is flowing around that never we never saw this. We, we haven't seen this since the 1890s. And so there's absolutely no limit. And believe me, it's not one college. You know, and you know that, Alec. It, it's always it's it, you, it. There's one, and they're and they're stomping on it. That's why they're throwing people out. He's resigning. He's resigning. He's resigning. They they want it to die. They want it to be one one isolated event. It's not. What percentage from your research of people are depraved criminals? Oh, I haven't done an analysis of the industry. I can tell you this, but of uh, of corporate chiefs. I have yet to find a corporation that I've been asked to investigate, not one where um, felonies aren't rife. We've just set up a system. We've set up a system that basically if you can steal enough, you steal you steal uh, impunity. Oh, I've talked to and a lot a of folks problem. that went I mean, to – Yeah. No, I mean, I've talked to a lot of people that went to business schools yeah. like you did, the prestigious Chicago uh, School of Business. I've talked to others, and they say they actually teach kind of – you know, at the graduate level, off to the side when they're off having beers with a professor. If you're gonna steal, steal big. Yeah, I mean, and in fact, they don't think it's a crime. They think that the rest of you are just a bunch of you know fools that that they play. You know, they think that you're very unsophisticated. Um, you know, like uh, what my professors were saying, like with uh, Steve Cohen and his insider trading, they'd say that's not really a crime. That's not really a crime. Well, you know what? If someone is selling you stock they know is going to blow up in your face and it goes in your pension fund, or they skin you for a stock that you're offloading because you think it's worthless, but then there's really gold in it, and they know it because it's all fixed. It's fraud. I'm sorry. That's not a victimless crime. It's fraud. It's fraud, and it's how people – People end up. They had 401k plans, and now they they can't you know wash their car with it. Um, and that's I'm sorry, that's not a victimless crime. And that's what when I was there with these guys in school, and I know them. Um, that's what they were taught that you know unsophisticated rubes like you just don't understand how the system works. And but in the long run, you should be grateful that they have. Um, that, that they have made a wonderful planet for you. And if it weren't for them, there would be no economy. That's their, that's their own fantasy, their own creation myth, that they are the gods who've created this wonderful world for you, and you ought to be grateful and shut up. Which one of the banker heads said, I'm doing God's work? Yeah, that was blank fine at Goldman Sachs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know. So burning down Greece, burning down Spain, um, and you know, if you read these secret memos, and you just get sick, you know. And I don't know what God it, he's praying to, you know, uh, what satanic system he's working under. But I can tell you this, um, you know, uh, I don't think that the, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what heaven he's going to uh, if if he says he's doing God's work. Well, that's the thing. I can't tell you how much family, how many friends, people that were had to sell their houses, who can't go on vacations, who can't put their kids through college, uh, people whose businesses are ruined, their employees laid off because their their stock investments on average of what had half their value cut in the last four years. And now we're going to see that basically taken away. And uh, and these guys think what they've done is good. And uh, it, it's it's just unbelievable. And 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 the kids at Penn State, the the majority running around throwing fits, saying don't fire our 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 coach. You know, uh, I mean, it just shows a total.